God's good, something's wrong with you. That's right, that's right. I want to touch on something this morning that you probably won't hear touched on in a lot of our churches in the Knoxville area. Remember a few months ago that I preached on a message about when you come out of Egypt, uh -huh. did Egypt come out of you? Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it, we we, t we touched on some areas about when, when we came out of sin, did sin come out of us? Uh -huh. I'm squealing up here. One of these mics on. Um, yeah. Okay, there we go. That's uh -huh. good, man. Now we'll squeal no more and hurt people's ears. But anyway, <laughs> the reason why I'm saying all of this, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Leviticus chapter 19. Preacher. I've been preaching a few messages from Leviticus and, and those areas, and there's a lot of powerful stuff in the first five books of the Bible. Yes, sir. Yes. But it talks about coming out of Egypt mm -hmm. and the mentality that goes on in Egypt. Yes. It's like we as saints of God, we come out of the world when we, we become born again, but a lot of times the world mentality still tries to creep in. And it's because of uh, the media around us and billboards and family members, co-workers at work, you know, trying to still influence us. Yes. And there's an area that I want to talk about that it, it, it's, a, it's a shocker to a lot of people. But, you know, some things God says, okay, I can overlook this and this and this and this. But there are some things God just says, it's an abomination. Yes. And He says, don't do it at all. Amen. Right. And um, I remember when I was young and my grandfather was let me preach at his church. And he was very protective over me. And I never could figure out why he was so protective. But he was so protective. And he pastored a very large church. And he let me preach at his church all the time. But he was so protective. And I didn't find out until he passed away why he was so protective. I didn't realize that the rest of my family members were involved in the occult. Uh. Hello? Oh, oh. Involved in astrology and tarot cards and tea leaves and yeah. casting spells and all those kind of things. And um, and I can see why my grandfather was trying to protect me from. Yeah. He was pastoring the church and all his kids were involved in other things. Oh. But they were coming to church. Yeah. Listen to me. I'm not talking about the people out in the world. I'm talking about church folk. And um, all of us that are here this morning, we're church folks. Whether you're saved or not saved, you're still a church folk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, and it says in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, listen to what God says here. Regard not them that have a familiar spirit. Yeah. Neither seek out the wizards to be defiled by them. Do you notice that? To be defiled. And then God completes, for I am the Lord your God. Yeah. And somebody may be asking this morning, what is a familiar spirit? I need to tell you what a familiar spirit is. Look at the word familiar. Uh -huh. It means they know something about you uh -oh. and everything that's around you. Uh -huh. How many of y'all know if you go to a fortune teller, I mean a real good one. Yes. Now I don't believe in fortune tellers. But if you go to a good fortune teller, they can tell you about your past. Uh -huh. They can tell you about your present. It might tell you a little bit about your future. Yeah. But the Bible says they don't have the Spirit of God. Yeah. But they have something that's called a familiar spirit. Yeah. Spirits that's been around longer than you and I have been around. Yeah. Come on, listen to me. That's right. Demon spirit has been on this planet for a long time. Yeah. So, so of course they would know your past. Yeah. Of course they would know your ancestors. Of course they would know your failures yeah. and your insecurities uh -huh. and all those kind of things. And they will use it against you and all those kind of things. Yeah. Now there's another place.
place that I want to take you, and it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 18, and I want you to turn there. I want to show you some things here this morning that God said is an abomination. Now what is an abomination? It means God totally hates it, despises it. You know, our pastor talks about seven abominations that are found in Proverbs. You know, a lying tongue and one dis- sows discord among his brethren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know what all that's rooted in? Oh. It's rooted in people trying to control and manipulate right. one another. Yeah. Yeah. And it's rooted in another word called witchcraft. Yeah. And what causes people to get involved in witchcraft? The Bible says rebellion. Yeah. Go talk to a witch sometime and ask them... Oh. Tell them about God and Jesus in the Bible. And what's the first thing they want to tell you? I don't want to have nothing to do with this God. I don't want to have nothing to do with this Jesus. And keep that Bible away from me. Because they are what? In rebellion. Something happened down the road that got them listening to the wrong voices. And I'm going to tell you something. Familiar spirits get in churches too. Yes, they do. Because I was looking up in the Hebrew dictionary. You know what a familiar spirit is? It's a prophesying spirit. Oh, oh my. They love to prophesy. Uh-huh. Turn on your TV. Oprah Winfrey's prophesying. Uh-huh. Come on. Yeah. Rosie O'Donnell's prophesying. Yeah. I'm telling you. And you think they're prophesying godly stuff. But they're not. The prophesying something else. Yeah. You listen to them. They hate the word of God. Yes, yeah. They hate Christians. Yeah. They think we're nothing but nimkapoops. Uh-huh. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not a nimkapoop. I'm a child of God being blessed by God here this morning. Amen, amen. But in Deuteronomy chapter 18, look at verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Preacher. Now what is God saying now? When you get born again, don't learn what you used to do before. That's right. That's pretty simple, ain't it? Yes. Yeah. Now watch this in verse 10. There shall not be found anyone, that's con- concluding all of us, Preacher. that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Yes, so what does that mean? Back in those days, they would literally cause bonfires and run their kids through them. Yes. Oh, yes. my. Uh-huh. And if they survived, they was blessed by the gods of those days. Uh-huh. But if they died, oh, well, that's another child gone. That's all right. We have another one. Bridget. And the thing we have today that we call passing through the fire, we call it abortion. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my. Ouch. So that spirit's still with us, just going into a, another direction. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to get into politics and all those kind of things, but I don't believe in killing anybody, yeah. whether it's an adult or a child or a baby born in a womb. I don't believe in killing anybody, because the Word of God says, Thou shall not murder, period. Yeah. There is no if and no but. That's right. But you shall not make your son and your daughter to pass through the fire. Well, he that uses divination. What's divination? Looking at astrology, tea leaves, tarot cards, and all those kind of things. That's divination. Let me continue on reading. Or is an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar 